Hi everyone. Sorry for the sorry for the delay. A few technical difficulties. We're just admitting the the last of the participants. Then we'll start in the next minute or two. Absolutely. Reviewing the view options. <clears throat> no, I've got the. Yeah. I don't know. It's not working. Is there anything to do with volume? Or? I've done the volume. Yeah. Yeah, for a second. Yeah. Definitely not working. We can hear you. I can't hear anybody. Hi everyone, thanks to everyone who's joining us. It's just taken a few minutes just to get everyone in. There's a few people still waiting. So as soon as we've got everyone in, we will we'll make a start. Thanks for your patience. Thank you. Speaking back on it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Turn back. Hi, everyone. I think we'll make a start now. As I say, thanks for your patience. Uh, just a few minutes to get everyone in, and uh, then the usual technical difficulties. Um, so, thank you so much for joining us. Um, this session should take about half an hour. Um, so we should uh, still get you back uh, back on time within the hour. Um, so we wanted to, to put this session together for all of you um, to cover some of the key background information to the games uh, and obviously give you some key information uh, about the volunteer experience. We know that a huge number of volunteers could not make the session and I know that a number of you are re representing other members of your family or organisations. So thank you to all of you to to um, for joining us and, and making the time. This session isn't going to be role specific, it isn't going to be venue specific, uh, so we won't go into the detail about every single volunteer role and every single volunteer task. Uh, it will just be quite top level, so if you do have any specific questions about your 
uh, your own volunteer venue or opportunity or sport, then please do either pop those in the chat and we'll get back to you um, as soon as we can or just pop me an email separately. Uh, and finally, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, so if you could all keep yourselves on mute, that would be appreciated. Cameras are entirely optional. If you want to show off your beautiful faces, that's absolutely fine. If you want to keep them hidden, that is also absolutely fine. So to those who I haven't met over the last few weeks or haven't had contact with, uh, my name is Kieran. I'm the volunteer manager for the Special Olympics National Summer Games uh, in Hamilton. Uh, so my responsibility is basically making sure that your volunteer experience is, is the very best it can be. Uh, I have been and will continue to be your main point of contact uh, before, during uh, and after the Games. Uh, so it's really nice to meet you all. Uh, and as I say, really uh, grateful for you taking the time uh, this evening. Uh, so that's me. Um, who are you? Well, you are part of a team of around 600 volunteers. Uh, and we, we really need all of you to, to make this event such, uh, such an excess, uh, success. Uh, as you know, we've got a huge variety of roles um, across the Special Olympics and the National Games, uh, from sport, transport, accommodation uh, and ceremonies. Uh, and as I say, we really do appreciate the support, uh, your dedication and your enthusiasm, uh, and it wouldn't be possible without you. Uh, and finally, you know, I, Personally, I've worked on a number of major international events with volunteers, um, and, it, and it goes without saying that volunteers always leave the, the biggest impression uh, and the biggest impact. So we really do hope that you can get everything out of it that you want to. So, so thank you again. Um, also on the call, or will be very shortly, is our Chief Executive, Carolyn Young. Um, I don't think she's on the call quite yet, but when she does make an appearance, then we will uh, quickly say hello to her. So I just quickly wanted to give a bit of background to Special Olympics New Zealand. Uh, I'm not sure how much you may or may not know about uh, Special Olympics New Zealand. Um, but Special Olympics New Zealand is, is not an event. Um, Special Olympics New Zealand is a year round organization uh, that offers uh, offering sports uh, training uh, and education to those with intellectual dis disabilities. Um, despite what you may or may not hear, we're not the Paralympics, uh, but we're part of Special Olympics International, uh, which is an organization that operates uh, in almost 200 countries around the world. Uh, athletes in New Zealand, they train together, take part in events uh, on the local level all throughout the year. And then every four years, they get the opportunity uh, to come together and compete at a national level. Uh, so the last games were back in 2017, they were down in Wellington, um, and for those of you who are good at maths will realise that that was five years ago. Um, Covid got in the way last year, they had to be postponed, uh, so we are now hosting the games this year in 2022, but you'll see from all our various branding and information that we are very much still the, the 2021 games. Uh, a select number of athletes also have the, the opportunity as well to compete uh, on an international level. Uh, so every four years, they will get the opportunity to go to the Special Olympics World Games. Uh, they are happening next year uh, and they will be in Germany. So that's just a bit of background as to what the Special Olympics are uh, and what Special Olympics New Zealand is all about. So in terms of the National Summer Games, as I've alluded to, they were postponed um, from 2021. Hamilton was awarded the Games uh, a number of years ago, uh, so it's been a long time in the planning, but we are delighted that the Games are going to be going ahead this year, and the Games will be taking place in eight different venues uh, across the city. Uh, the National Summer Games is not a ticketed event. Uh, all of the events, all of the sports are open to the public. Uh, it's completely free, subject to capacities, um, but the main focus, of course, is very much on the athletes uh, as opposed to the spectators. Obviously, with such a, a large number of athletes, teams and coaches coming to Hamilton, we do have an extensive transport plan in place for all of the different athletes who will be coming and going to and from all the different uh, venues, accommodation, sports, um, sports halls. So we've got a private company in place to, to put together that big logistical plan of, of getting everyone where they need to be. So there's a lot of work that's gone in, as I say, should have been 2021, but we're here. It is event week. Uh, so we've got a lot to, to look forward to over the next few days. 
Just to give you a few facts, figures, and numbers for the, the games this week. Um, so we have just under a thousand athletes who are going to be competing at this games, uh, and they come from 38 different clubs all across the country. Um, obviously, the, the athletes cannot come by themselves and they cannot make this possible on their own. Uh, so they will be traveling with over 400 members of the support team. Uh, that makes up a variety of team managers, uh, head coaches, assistant coaches, uh, and a number of other volunteers. So they will also be coming uh, to Hamilton over the next few days. Uh, athletes uh, are going to be accommodated over seven different uh, accommodation providers across Hamilton and in Cambridge. Most of these are university halls of residence. Uh, and finally, we have 10, 10 different sports uh, on offer. The clubs uh, and the teams will vary in size. Um, so a number of them have put forward athletes in just one sport. It might be multiple or it might be all of them. So they do vary in size uh, and they will be competing in four different days uh, of competition. So I just wanted to give you a bit of a, an overview as to what this week is looking like, what the key milestones are uh, over the different days. So obviously we're on Monday now, so the countdown is, is well and truly on. So from Wednesday, the first of our teams are going to start arriving in Hamilton. We've got a small number on Wednesday, uh, and then the bulk of the teams will start to arrive uh, on the Thursday. Uh, and although there's no sport competition on Thursday, uh, the games very much do begin then. We have our Healthy Athletes programme, which uh, kicks off in the morning. Uh, as, as well as that, we open our Athlete Event Village. And then, of course, later in the afternoon at four o'clock, the games officially open uh, with our opening ceremony. From the Friday is when we have the, the beginning of the sport competition. So the sport runs across uh, four days, the Friday uh, right the way through to the Monday. So we've got different sports happening uh, on different days. Some are two days, some are three, uh, and some are all four. I won't go into the full schedule at the moment, but if you go onto our website, you can see exactly what is happening uh, on which day. Uh, and then everything wraps up on Monday. Uh, we have the closing ceremony uh, later in the afternoon. And then the most exciting part for all the athletes is that leads straight into their disco where they can celebrate all of the achievements um, and all of, um, all of the fun that they've had over the last week. Uh, so hopefully that gives you a bit of an overview uh, as to what is going on over the next week. As I say, we've got four days of competition, uh, but there's a lot going on uh, outside of that as well. So I want to talk a little bit about what is going to happen during the games, the different aspects. As I say, there's more to it than just, uh, than just the sport. And I wanted to give a bit of a nod to the law enforcement, uh, law enforcement torch run. So you may or may not uh, have heard about this, uh, but the law enforcement torch run uh, has become a tradition for Special Olympics National Games, um, not just in New Zealand, but all around the world. Uh, it is similar in many ways to the Olympic torch relay, which you've probably heard about, uh, and a flame of hope uh, visits clubs all across the country. Uh, they get the chance to kind of celebrate their moments in the lead up to the games. And this is supported by uh, their local police forces. Uh, so it also allows athletes to be connected to their communities. It generates local uh, excitement ahead of the games. And the whole thing finishes at the opening ceremony of the games, uh, where that final, uh, final runner uh, will take the, take the flame into the opening ceremony. And that is the official start of the National Summer Games. So I've just mentioned the, the opening ceremony. So um, as I say, the, the games are opened and are closed by uh, an opening and the closing ceremony. Both will take place at Lodlin's event center in their uh, Glowbox arena. So the opening ceremony consists of uh, a number of different uh, items that includes the athletes and coaches both taking their oath. Uh, we've got various entertainment. Uh, and as I just mentioned, it's also the culmination of the torch run as well. Not forgetting, as you might see on the screen, there will also or might also be an appearance from our mascot, uh, Kaha the Kiwi. Uh, so we're very excited to have um, Kaha's first appearance at a National Summer Games. So uh, if you're lucky, you may have a chance to see Kaha. The opening ceremony is open to everyone. Um, so hopefully you've all received your official invite uh, to attend. So you're very welcome to come along. Uh, you don't need to uh, respond to RSVP to that invite. You don't need a ticket, uh, but you are, as I say, more than welcome to come along. 
And at the end of the games, we also have a closing ceremony. It is much smaller than the opening ceremony, um, but it does bring that official uh, close to the games. And as I mentioned, it leads straight onto the disco, which is uh, an absolute highlight for all of the athletes. Unfortunately, you as volunteers are unable to attend the disco as much as I'm sure you would all love to. Uh, but if you are volunteering, you will be there. But otherwise, we don't have capacity for, for anyone else. So as I say, four days of sports, but tailed at either end by two amazing ceremonies. So moving on to the sports, we've got 10 different sports happening at the National Summer Games. You can see all of them here, and they're happening over eight different venues. Clodlin's Event Centre will definitely be our central hub. We've got three different sports that are happening there, football, bocce and indoor bowls. But that will also host um, the Healthy Athletes programme. And we've got the Athlete Event Village Media Hub. Uh, and it's also got our ceremonies which are happening there. Yeah, excuse me. Uh, other venues that are being hosted. Uh, that are hosting sport throughout the games. We've got Waterworld for the swimming, um, Narawahia uh, Golf Club for the golf, Waikato Equestrian Centre for equestrian, Unirec at the University of Waikato is hosting the powerlifting, Temp and Bowling at Sky City, Basketball is up at the peak, and then finally we've got Athletics happening uh, at Porritt Stadium. You might have heard us mention the Healthy Athletes Programme, or you might have read about it in some of the information that we've sent out previously. But the Healthy Athletes Programme is uh, a really key part of the Games. It's often referred to as HAPS as well. So if you hear about HAPS, that is the Healthy Athletes Programme. Uh, but what you might not be aware is that there's, there's lots of health inequalities when it comes to, to people with intellectual disabilities. And as a result of this, they experience much higher levels uh, of health issues and, and premature death. So at the National Summer Games, um, as I mentioned, there's a really key opportunity uh, for athletes to, to be screened in four different disciplines. So this is ass uh, assessors' feet, uh, hearing, eyes and teeth. Um, so it is entirely optional for athletes, but it is completely free. They can come along, have these free consultations. They will get referrals where they need to. Um, so it's not just about their time at the Games, but it has a, a much wider impact uh, on the rest of their lives and their ongoing health. So it, it's a really important part of the programme. Uh, and in addition to those four different disciplines, the feet, the hearing, the eyes uh, and the teeth, well, uh, athletes also have the opportunity to learn uh, more about their general health and well-being as part of our health promotion stands. I know that a number of you will have signed up in a general capacity to support the Healthy Athletes program, which is, which is amazing. Uh, and those of you who are doing that will be volunteering alongside uh, a much wider team of over 100 medical and clinical professionals. Uh, they're all qualified in their respective areas, and they will be the ones who also volunteering their time will be conducting the screenings on all of the different athletes. So it's a really big operation, but as I mentioned, it's a really, really important part of the Games. Uh, so the Healthy Athletes Programme will be set up in Clodlands. Uh, it will be taking over most of the upstairs of Clodlands, um, and athletes will be able to attend that around their sporting schedule. So if it's a day, if it's a morning, if it's an afternoon, that they don't have any support at sport that they're competing in, they'll be able to come along to Clodlands uh, and take part in any or all of these screenings. Uh, also taking place at Clodlands is our Athlete event, uh, event Village, which is a really exciting addition to the Games this year. It has happened in previous games, but it didn't happen in Wellington. So we've given it a bit of a shake up. Uh, we've made it a bit bigger uh, and it's going to be a really uh, key space that volunteers and athletes can come along to relax, uh, chill out. We're going to have some activities there. Um, it's, uh, it's a comfortable space that athletes can come along with some of their fellow athletes, meet some other athletes and take part in activities such as, you know, tabletop crafts, jigsaws, games, table tennis, parkour. There's going to be a photo booth there. Uh, we've also got a quiet room. Uh, if it all gets a little bit too much for some of the athletes, we'll have uh, an athlete wall where they can all sign their names and that will be very much stored and kept for the future. So there's going to be lots and lots of different things going on. And similar to the Healthy Athletes Programme, 
uh, athletes can come along to this when they're not doing their sport competition. So because some of the sports just last for one, two or three days, they will have time that they can come along to this space. And it means that they don't have to just be in their accommodation or, or think what else they're going to do at their time in Hamilton. It, it gives them an opportunity to, to relax and do some activities. So that's a little bit of a whistle stop tour as to what the, what the games consist of. Of course, we've got those 10 sports, but on top of that, we've got an amazing athlete event village, and we've also got the Healthy Athletes program top and tails with two amazing ceremonies and disco. So moving on to obviously you guys, the most uh, important part, certainly for this call. Um, as I say, we really couldn't do, uh, we really couldn't do the games without all of you. And we want to make sure that you are as prepared as you can be and make sure that you have all the information that you need to to be able to not only do your job amazingly um, but have an amazing experience so firstly before even uh, attending the games and coming along for your first shift we want to make sure that you are, are ready and you feel ready so please make sure that you you plan ahead what I mean by that is making sure that you have read through all of the different information that I have sent you, which I appreciate is, is a lot. Um, and it can be a lot to read through sometimes, but there, there does, um, there is a lot of information within, um, within those packs, but a lot of important information. So please do have a read of those, because if you've got a question, it's more than likely being covered in that. Um, so please do uh, have a read of that. One of those documents is the venue information guide, which I shared yesterday, and hopefully you've had a chance to look at that. Uh, but that contains important information such as where you need to park at certain venues, where you need to check in, uh, and also important contact information for who it is that you need to report to when you get there. So please do have a read of that. And also have a final check on your roster file account. You might have seen that there's a little information button uh, beside each shift. If we get any last minute changes or any last minute information that we need to pass on to you, the quickest way for us to do that is just to upload it automatically onto your Rostify account. So before you head out the door in the morning, have a quick click on that uh, and make sure that you're fully knowledgeable on what it is that's going on. And the final part of getting ready is obviously knowing what it is that you need to take with you. So my piece of advice would be take, take as little as you need to. Uh, please don't take any valuables that you don't need to. We can't guarantee that there's going to be um, secure storage at every venue. So if you don't need to take it, please don't. Um, you will have space and a room uh, to leave valuable uh, to leave your belongings. But as I say, please don't bring, uh, bring any valuables. When it comes to travel, uh, again, please refer us to the venue information guide uh, when it comes to where to park. Well, when it comes to taking public transport, which we encourage you to do if you're able to, uh, please do refer to the Hamilton, Hamilton City Council website, as well as the BUSIT website. Uh, that contains all of the different bus timetables uh, and will tell you how to get to and from all of the different venues. And as you might have read, with your accreditation, you will be entitled to free public transport as well. So when you get to your venue, you need to check in. Um, so following the notes that you've already been given, that will show you where you need to report to. We appreciate that some of the buildings, especially Claudelins, is quite big, it has multiple entrances. So that venue information guide will tell you which door and which entrance you need to go to, at which point you will be checked in. You'll be checked in either by the venue manager or it will be one of our amazing team leader volunteers. They will ask you to see your accreditation, they'll make a note of your name, they'll tick you off. And then they'll show you to the volunteer lounge or a volunteer break room, uh, depending on what venue you are in. So that will be the place that you can leave your belongings, have a sit down, and you'll wait for all of the rest of the volunteers to arrive. Once all of the rest of the volunteers have arrived, that will be the chance that you um, can meet the venue manager. You'll be given a nice warm welcome. You'll have your induction uh, and a short orientation session. Uh, so that will cover important things like the health and safety, but it also run through the timetable for the day, any key points and milestones that will be happening throughout that shift. Most importantly, it will also cover what you will be doing. So there will be lots of different tasks, lots of different roles, depending on what the sport is, depending on what the venue is. As we've mentioned previously, there is no prior training, any formal training that is needed for any of these opportunities, but there will be a half an hour period that you will be run through the different roles getting to know the venue, getting to know the wider team, and that will put you in good stead 
uh, for what, uh, what will be in store for the rest of the day. Once you've received that, there will be a short uh, time before the athletes start to arrive. Um, obviously, if you are arriving for an afternoon shift, the athletes will already be there. So we'll about, have about a, a half an hour handover period between the early team and the later team, but it'll be exactly the same. You'll receive that same welcome induction and orientation, and you'll be given all the information that you need to have in order to do your shift. So once you've done all of that, once you've completed an amazing shift, met some amazing people and had a hell of a lot of fun, uh, it will be time to check out again. So it'll be the same process. You'll go back to the team leader or the venue manager. You'll say that you're on your way. They'll check you out and that will be your day wrapped up. So it doesn't matter if you're at a sport venue, if you're at uh, the Athlete Village, Healthy Athletes Programme, whatever it is, it will follow this same process. You will arrive, you'll be checked in, you'll receive an induction, you'll have an amazing volunteer time, and then you'll check out at the end. So that's the key simple steps to what your day will look like. At each venue, and at each volunteer shift, there's gonna be a number of different people that you are introduced to, and they all have different but very important roles. So our volunteer team leaders um, are an amazing group of volunteers. We're going to have one of those at most, but not all of the sports. Uh, and we also have team leaders for the Healthy Athletes Programme, Accommodations and the Athlete Village. So they will be there to support the venue manager or event manager in all aspects of what is going on at that venue. They will be the ones who check in uh, with you. They will be the ones who support the inductions and importantly they'll also be the ones who make sure that you have a rotation in your volunteer roles that you get fed that you have breaks um, so they will be a key link between you and the wider team also at each venue we will have a venue manager they are a member of the special olympics new zealand team and they will be responsible for the overall operation of what's going on at that venue of course, if it's not a support, if it's not sport that you're volunteering at, uh, each accommodation will have a point of contact as well. That will be Sam, our accommodation uh, coordinator. And at Claudlands, if it's the Athlete Village, it will be our um, Athlete Village manager, which is myself, or it will be the Healthy Athletes Program Manager that you'll be reporting to. So there'll always be at least one uh, contact that you will have for every shift, as well as a team leader. Uh, also at the venue for the sports, there will be a technical director. So the technical director will work very closely with the venue manager and they are responsible for all aspects of the sport operation. So they are uh, experts and qualified in their respective sporting field. So they will be the ones who are, um, as I say, running the operations for that particular sport. Uh, reporting to them will be a wider group of volunteers. They will be our sports officials. Uh, so they will be qualified sports volunteers officiating the sports. They'll have a slightly different uniform, but they'll all be part of the wider sporting team. So whereas you will be taking on a more general role, they will be taking on the more sport specific roles. Uh, and finally, at each of the sport venues, we will also have games management system volunteers. So they um, are coming from Datacom and they are responsible for recording and reporting all of the different results for each sport. So as you can imagine, and as you can see, there's lots of different teams uh, who will be operating at each venue. But the main contacts for yourself is that volunteer team leader who you will be checking in with. And then throughout the day, also the venue manager who will be responsible for the running of that venue. So uniform and accreditation. Um, so firstly, thank you to everyone who came in past last week to collect your uniform and kits. Uh, we had almost 350 volunteer kits go out the door that day, which is fantastic. So thank you to all of you for coming on and collecting that. Um, so if you have received your kit, you'll know that you um, will have received a volunteer t-shirt. So this is to be worn at all times and during all volunteer shifts. If you do need an additional t-shirt or if you've been given the wrong size or have any questions, please just drop me an email and we can make sure that we can get a different or another t-shirt to you as soon as possible. The volunteer t-shirt is the only official piece of uh, volunteer uniform that you will receive. So we recommend that all other clothing that you wear uh, is comfortable. Uh, it shouldn't be offensive in any way. So it's not screaming any loud logos or anything that will cause offense, but please do make sure that it is comfortable. You will be um, doing some 
well, for some sports, you will be doing some relatively kind of sport specific roles. So we want to make sure that you are as, as comfortable as possible. And that also applies to, to footwear. So we do recommend training, uh, trainers, running shoes, something similar, but something that you're comfortable in. Um, and finally, prepare for all weathers. So you'll have seen in some of the communications, we recommend that you, you cover up in the sun, that you've got sun cream with you, you've got hats. At all of the outdoor sport venues, we will have some national summer games, sun caps. So please do help yourself to those if you require. But if you've also looked at the forecast at the other end of the, the scale, please do also prepare for other weather. Uh, we don't provide uniform in the way of jackets. So if you need to bring a waterproof with you, we do encourage that you have that in your bag just in case. We'll keep our fingers crossed, but just be prepared for hot weather, for wet weather and everything in between. Accreditation, um, again, you should have received this if you were there on Thursday. If not, it will be making its way to you at your venue if you're not also collecting it this week. So your accreditation is a hugely important part of your kit and it must also be worn during every volunteer shift. It's unique to you, so it has your name on it, and we will be checking those as you get checked in to each venue. If you lose it, if you misplace it, it's fine. Please try not to, but if you do, drop me a message and we'll try and get one to you as soon as possible. And as I mentioned before, that pass does get you into, um, it does entitle you, sorry, to public transport across Hamilton. Uh, it is free but you'll only be able to get that if you have your volunteer pass on you. So please make sure that you have that. On to meals, which I know for a lot of you will be the most important part of the day. Um, so as we've communicated, all volunteer shifts with the exception of accommodation and airport shifts, will um, uh, you will receive a, a meal bag. You'll be entitled to that if you're on any of those shifts. So these meals will be delivered to the venue each morning and then they will be distributed to you accordingly at the start of, um, of, of your break. So whenever the team leader or the venue manager says that you can go on your break, you will be allocated and given one of our meal bags. There will be a selection of different meals to, to cater for all the different dietary requirements. We know that we did gather that information on registration forms. So hopefully at each venue, we will have something for you, but please bear in mind that we cannot guarantee this. Obviously um, on an ongoing basis, we've got lots of volunteers signing up for different shifts here and there. So we cannot guarantee that we'll be able to, to cater to every single person on that shift. So just to play it safe, we do ask that you bring uh, your own food with you as well, particularly if you've got specific dietary requirements. Um, if you've got any questions on that, please let us know. But as I say, you will be entitled to a meal. We will have one for you, but we cannot guarantee it will always be to your dietary requirements. Moving on to COVID. Um, of course, we weren't going to get through this without giving COVID a mention. Uh, it's the reason that the Games were postponed last year. Uh, it's still very much with us. So we do have a responsibility and, and each and every one of us does, does have a part to play. Uh, we, the, the National Summer Games and Special Olympics New Zealand uh, has a risk management committee and a medical director who have created an extensive COVID-19 policy uh, and this is constantly under review. I think we all have to be realistic that COVID is here. Athletes and volunteers will get COVID during the games. It's out there and there's no reason to say why we will, as you know, over a thousand people be, be avoiding it. So it will be with us. We just have to do our best to minimize that uh, and take the appropriate action to, to those it does affect. We do have a number of different contingencies and plans in place. I won't go through all of them, but if athletes do catch uh, COVID during the games, we do have separate accommodation for them. We have an isolation site that will only be utilized if athletes have COVID so that they can be kept separate. Athletes who have COVID on the North Island, they can go back to their addresses. But as I say, if they're further afield, we do have that accommodation that they can use. For those of you who have received your volunteer kits, you will re realize that potentially the most exciting piece of that kit was a lovely pack of COVID rat tests. Uh, you're welcome. So before you take your first, tiff, uh, first shift, we do encourage you to take a COVID test. Uh, all athletes, all coaches, all teams, uh, all staff are, uh, are taking tests before they arrive in Hamilton. So we do uh, ask that all volunteers take that as well. It's, it's only fair 
to everyone else that's attending. So please do, uh, please do take a test. And if you need more tests, we have absolutely plenty. So please come to us and we can give you some more. Hopefully it goes without saying that if you do test positive, please, in the nicest possible way, stay away. Um, if you are symptomatic, and even if you do test negative, if you have any symptoms, please also stay away. Drop me an email, give me a call, let me know the situation. You won't be in trouble for it. We want you to be as safe and we want everyone to be as safe as possible. So if you've got COVID or if you've got any COVID symptoms, please stay away until you're negative or you're feeling much better. Mask wearing policy at the games, it's not in force. We are not requiring everyone to wear a face mask during the National Summer Games. That said, it is entirely personal choice. If you would prefer to wear a face mask, that is absolutely fine and you will absolutely be welcome to do so. We also have lots and lots of face masks and they will be readily available at every different venue, whether that's a sport venue or accommodation, we will have them there. So please do help yourself. And as I say, it's not enforced, but we do encourage and do welcome you should you wish to do so. And similarly with hand sanitizer and hand, and hand hygiene, we will have lots of different hand sanitizing stations across all of the different venues. So please do make sure that you're taking care uh, and exercising good hand hygiene, not just with sanitizers, but regular hand washing, because it's important that we all do our bit. And finally, the number that you'll see at the bottom of the screen there is for our medical director. So athletes and teams know the process and they know the procedures that will follow if one or multiple of their team members do catch COVID. It shouldn't happen, but if any of you do uh, receive the information that there's a member of a team that receive, that catches COVID, um, please do um, tell them to, to phone that number. And then we'll be able to make the necessary arrangements for them. Obviously, if they're symptomatic, we can encourage everyone to take a test. They should obviously be keeping their distance from everyone else. Uh, but in any instance, we've got, the, we've got the plans in place. We've got the details of our medical director there. And we will be able to put in place our, uh, our plans, which, as I say, have been planned quite extensively. We know that COVID is a bit... Um, a bit of a touchy subject with some people so if you've got any questions on that or you're not uh, comfortable about anything that I've covered or if you've got any questions please just drop me an email because we want to make sure that everyone at the games is comfortable. Moving on to the final bits of information that you need to be aware of um, so you should have received all three bits of uh, information which are on the screen now so you've got your volunteer handbook I know it's a big document, trust me, I wrote it, but it does contain lots of information in there. And as I mentioned before, if you've got a question, the answer is probably in that. So please do reference that and have a quick read uh, before passing on any other questions. The venue information guide, which I referred to as well, which was sent yesterday, that's got the key information about parking, check-in and contact information for each different sport and for each role. And if you've got any difficulty signing up for shifts on Rosterify, I put together a step-by-step -step guide, uh, which will tell you just exactly what you need to do. And finally, if you do need to get in contact, if there's any information that you cannot find or anything you need to know before, during or after the games, please get in touch with me. Um, I do try and get back to everyone as soon as possible. The most efficient way of getting in touch with me is genuinely by email. I know you might just want to pick up the phone, but with um you know being constantly on the move that's often quite difficult so please do just drop me an email i'm on emails the whole time and i will get back to you as quick as i can hopefully it goes without saying that if it is urgent please do pick up the phone and i'll try uh, try and answer the call you've also got the contact details for each specific venue so if it does relate to that day and your volunteer experience for that day for example you're running late please do contact that venue directly as it will just pass on the message uh, much quicker. But for anything else, please do come to me. But I think the final thing to say is thank you. Again, you know, you've all registered to volunteer for different reasons. I know you'll all have different motivations, but whatever that reason is, whatever that motivation is, we want to make sure that you get everything out of it that you wish. Um, so whether it's before, whether it's during or after your shifts, myself and the wider team, you know, we'll always be open to your comments, to your feedback. Hopefully there's no complaints, but if you do have any, we want you to hear them. So please do let us know if there's anything that we can do to improve your overall experience. And finally, enjoy yourselves. 
these games have been, as I mentioned, quite a long time in the making, uh, and we're sure that they're going to leave lasting impressions for all of you. Uh, you're going to meet incredible people, you're going to meet incredible athletes, other volunteers, and I'm sure there's going to be lots of memories that you will take away with you for a very long time. Special Olympics is a very special community, and we're sure that you will realise that very, very soon. So thank you again. Um, as I mentioned earlier, our Chief Executive Carolyn's on the call, so I'm just very quickly going to hand over to her in case there's anything that she wants to add. Um, but yeah, thank you all again. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. That was an uh, amazing briefing that you provided everyone. And, and, and thank you to all the volunteers that are out there. I mean, there's not really much more that I can say that, but that we couldn't do this event without you. We need 600 volunteers to run the event. And, and we really hope that you have an amazing time. You should get lots of smiles, lots of high fives, lots of hugs, um, and lots of fun. We, you know, one of the the um, values of Special Olympics is fun and we want to make sure that not just the athletes but our staff and our volunteers and our technical officials that everybody has fun and, and one of the most important things for us is inclusion so for people to be included and have an opportunity to be part of something and that's what this these games are all about. We've tried to answer most of the questions that have come through. There's just a couple I want to hit um, Kieran up with at um, short notice here while he's here and hopefully we don't get too much feedback while we're just across from each other. There was two questions that I wasn't sure of the answer. Three questions I wasn't sure of the answer. What time does Claudelands open in the morning for people to collect their um, their accreditation uh, if they're coming in in the morning? What time would that be? Yeah. yeah so, so if you haven't managed to receive your accreditation, obviously we've got another session on Wednesday that you can come along and get your kit. I do appreciate that for a small number of you, that's not possible. So if you aren't able to make it along on Wednesday please let us know and we will make arrangements for you to receive that at the start of your shift. So please just come along at the, uh, at the start of your shift as you are scheduled to potentially allow five minutes beforehand to get changed, uh, oh, but it will all be there waiting for you. You don't need to come into Claudine's beforehand. Perfect. And then just two other quick questions. Um, uh, so people will have to come to Claudine's to get their accreditation. They won't be able to get it from the venue. Is that correct? No, so if you, as I say, if you aren't able to make it to Claudelands on Wednesday, where we've got the allocated and dedicated session, we will get it to your venue. Um, so as I say, if you just pop, pop me an email to say, hey, I can't make it on Wednesday, um, this is my first shift, um, we will make arrangements to get it to the venue manager. So when you check in, we'll, we'll hand it over to you then. Fantastic. One last one. While I've got it here, um, is there a team leader at the Auckland Airport for welcome and transport as well? No, so we don't have any team leaders scheduled on to the airports. Uh, so I will be getting in touch with anyone who's uh, rostered on to Auckland or Hamilton Airport on Wednesday and Thursday. We've got a slightly different uh, setup there. You will have a point of contact from the airport and you will also have a point of contact from Special Olympics New Zealand on the phone. Uh, but as I say, it's slightly different arrangements there. So we will be emailing you separately. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And there's a lot of information that Karen's provided and there's a lot of documentation. So for those of you that haven't got your emails, we have collected that, that information. We will email you out the uh, venue information packet that was sent out yesterday so that we know that you can get that. And we can also send out to anyone uh, that hasn't managed to check on through the um, roster by system to select a shift. We'll send you the step-by-step -step guide or if Karen can just register those for you, we can get those done directly. So um, Karen will be back in touch with most of you tomorrow so not too many but that was uh, really great to get your feedback so thank you once again and I look forward to seeing you in and around the venues on Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday Monday thank, thank you. you thanks everyone thanks again